Today we're going to be looking at section 10.7, Complex Numbers. To begin with, on example 1, imaginary unit is i. i squared equals a negative 1. i equals the square root of a negative 1. Then they ask us to write using i notation. Well, if we have the square root of a negative 36, we know the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of a negative 1 is i, so it is 6i. When we have the square root of a negative 5, the square root of 5 has to stay in there, and we bring the negative out because a negative 1 is i. So we have i times the square root of 5. A negative times the square root of a negative 20 is the same as a negative times the quantity, the square root of a negative 1, times the square root of 4 times 5. We know the square root of 4 is 2. We know the square root of a negative 1 is i. And this negative out front makes it a negative i. So when we want to rewrite that, we take 2 times a negative i, and we get negative 2i. And it's times the radical 5 for our final answer of a negative 2i, radical 5. On example 2, we're multiplying or dividing. We have a negative 3 square root of the negative 3 times the square root of negative 5. We would write that as i times the square root of 3 times i times the square root of 5. So now we have i times i, which we know is i squared. And the square root of 3 times the square root of 5 is the square root of 15. But we know i squared is a negative 1, so we just put a negative outside of our square root of 15 for our final answer of a negative square root of 15. A negative 36 uh, square root of a negative 36, excuse me, is 6i. The square root of a negative 1 is just i. So when we multiply those, we get 6 times i squared. But we know i squared is a negative 1, so a negative 1 times 6 leaves us with an answer of negative 6. We have the square root of 8 times the square root of a negative 2, which is the square root of a negative 16. We know the square root of 16 is 4, and the square root of a negative 1 is i. So the answer is 4i. On the next problem, we have a square root of negative 125. We pull that negative out, and we have an i times the square root of 125, all divided by the square root of 5. Well, 125, the square root of it, divided by the square root of 5, is simply the square root of 25. We know the square root of 25 is 5, and so 5 times i leaves us an answer of just 5i. On example 3, it says to multiply. So we have a negative 7i times 3i. So we get a negative 21i squared. We know i squared is a negative 1. So a negative 1 times a negative 21 becomes a positive 21. The next one is 3i times 2 minus i. We distribute that 3i to each piece. So we have 3i times 2 for 6i. 3i times i is a negative 3i squared. We know i squared is a negative 1. So now we have a negative 3 times a negative 1, and we get a positive 3. We still have the 6i out front, so the answer is simply 6i plus 3. Then the final part on this example 3 is 2 minus 5i times the quantity 4 plus i. So we go ahead and distribute. We get 2 times 4, and then we get 2 times i. 
and we come down here, we have a negative 5i times 4, and then finally a negative 5i times i. Continuing to simplify, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times i is 2i, a negative 5i times 4 is a negative 20i, and a negative 5i times i gives us a negative 5i squared. Continuing to simplify, we have 8, and we have our negative 20i plus 2i for a total of negative 18i, and we know a negative 5 times our negative 1, we get a plus 5. So adding 8 and 5, we have 13 minus our 18i. On example 4, it says divide and write in the form a plus bi. So in order to divide, we need to multiply by the conjugate. So on the bottom, we have 1 minus i times 1 plus i. And what we do to the bottom, we must also do to the top. So once we distribute, we have 2 times 1, which is our 2. And we have 2 times i, which is our 2i. Coming down here, we have 1 times i for just i. And then finally, i squared, which is right there. On the denominator, we have 1 squared minus i squared. Continuing to simplify, we know that that's 2 plus 3i because we have 2i plus i. And we also know i squared is a negative 1. On the denominator, we have 1 plus 1. 1 plus 1 we know is 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1, and we're left with a 3i. But they want it in this format, a plus bi. So we need to pull the number out because that is the a. And then we have three halves i. So now that is the correct answer in a plus bi format. The next one is 7 divided by 3i. We take the, both the numerator and the denominator times a negative 3i. In the numerator, we end up with a negative 21i. In the denominator, we get a negative 9 times i squared. We know that i squared is a negative 1, so a negative 1 times a negative 9 gives us 9. Continuing to simplify, 3 goes into negative 21, negative 7 times, and it goes into 9 3 times. But they want us to write it as in the bi form, so we'll put the negative out front and we'll say that it's 7 thirds i. We do not have a, another lone number, which would be our a. We just have the bi. Example 5 asks us to find each power of i, and they say, remember, i squared equals a negative 1, i cubed equals a negative i, and i to the fourth equals a 1. So if I write i to the seventh, then I can write that as i to the fourth times i cubed. When I look up here, I get 1 times a negative i, so my answer is simply a negative i. i to the twentieth, I can think of that as i to the fourth to the fifth power. Well, I know i to the fourth is 1. 1 to the fifth power would just be 1. Now, this is a big one, but we just keep our wits about us. We know how to do it. i to the 46th. Well, I can break that into i to the 44th times i squared. I can further break down i to the 44th as i to the 4th to the 11th power we still have it times our i squared. Well, i to the fourth I know is 1, and 1 to the 11th power is still just 1. But i squared is negative 1. 
So 1 times a negative 1 leaves me a final answer of negative 1.